Today we're going to look at the current in a conductor. We're first going to consider the motion of electrons in a conductor when there's no voltage, no potential difference across the conductor. So what we can say about the motion of electrons is that they're rapid, they're moving very fast, but they're moving randomly. And what that means is they're moving in all different directions. And because of this randomness, the net movement, the net flow of charge is zero. As a result, there's no current. So the electrons are moving. However, their movement, they're not free to move in the conductor because of these positive ions, these nuclei that are present, represented by the blue. They're fixed in fixed positions. And because of them, the electron's movement is impeded, restricted, because they collide with the ions. And as a result, gives rise to this electrical concept of resistance. We're now going to consider the motion of the electrons when there's now a voltage, a potential difference across the, co across the conductor. So the motion of the electrons are still rapid, individually they're still moving rapidly and they're still moving randomly in different directions but overall there's a movement, a net movement, a net drift in one direction and this net movement in one direction gives us a current in the conductor. So we say this net movement is a drift, a slow drift, because the word drift implies a slow movement. And we say the electrons have a drift velocity, which represents their average distance travelled per unit time as they move along the wire due to the voltage, the potential difference across the conductor. Here we have an animation showing the motion of the electrons, again by the yellow, in a conductor. So here we have a conductor where there's no voltage, no potential difference across it. So you can see that the electrons are moving rapidly and they're moving randomly in all different directions. But there's no net movement in one direction. And when we apply a voltage across the conductor, you can see, again, individually the electrons are moving rapidly and randomly different directions but now there's a net movement in one direction giving rise to this current. So before we look at how we determine the current in a conductor we're first going to look at a this example of a Maltesers production line where you've got a worker who's um, seeing the Maltesers pass by his the conveyor belt and he's trying to work out how much money is passing by per second and he has this four pieces of information so he knows that in each packet of Maltesers there's 20 Maltesers. He knows that the average velocity of the conveyor belt so the Malteser packets on the conveyor belt is 0.20 meters per second. He also knows that for a unit length of conveyor belt so a unit length meaning one meter of conveyor belt there are 70 Malteser packets and he also knows that each Malteser is worth 0.3 pence. See if you can work out how much money is passing through the conveyor belt per second. So maybe you may have worked it out like this. First of all looking at the velocity and seeing in one second it's going to travel the conveyor belt will have travelled 0.20 metres. So to work out how many packets have moved in this time, if we know one metre conveyor belt has 70 packets, then 0.20 metres of conveyor belt will have 70 times 0.20, so 14 packets of Maltesers will have passed by in that one second. So now that we know the number of packets, we can work out how many total number of Maltesers that have passed by in one second. So we times the number of packets with the number of Maltesers in a packet. So that's 14 times by the 20, which gives us 280 Maltesers. And finally, we can work out the total money per second, because now that we know 
the total Maltesers, and we know the cost of each Malteser. We times these two numbers together, we get the total money per second, which gives us 84 pence per second. So to get a general equation, I'm now going to replace all these numbers with letters, where our 20 will now be an N number of Maltesers per packet. Our 0 0.20 meters per second will now be replaced with V, which will be our average velocity of the packets on the conveyor belt. Our 70 will be replaced with A, and our 0 0.3 pence will replace letter E. So it'd be N, A, V, E. So we're going to try and get an equation to determine the money passing through per second using these four terms. If we go back to the example we did before, what we did is, or what you'll notice, that we times all these numbers together. So we took our value of A and we times it by our value of B to get the number of packets. And then we times it with our value of N to get the number of Maltesers. And then we times it by our value of E to get the cost total money per second. So we times all of these N, A, B, E together to get our money per second. And that's the equation. So if we now consider the current in a conductor, so we have the same letters, but now we'll be looking instead of more teasers, we'll be looking at electrons. And rather, we don't have electrons per packet, but we do have electrons per unit volume of conductor. So per unit volume meaning for one meters cubed of conductor. So the number of electrons we have. And V is our drift velocity of the electrons in the conductor. A would be the cross-sectional area of the conductor. And E will be the charge of each electron. So we have our N, our A, our V and our E. And if we times these four quantities together, we get the current in the conductor. To explain why NAVE equals the current, we're going, we need to go back to the example we did with the Maltesers production line, where we first started with the V. So we can say in one second, because it's traveling V meters per second, the electron will travel a distance of V. And in that one second, the electron will have traveled a, through a volume of AV. So we times the A and the V together to get the volume through which the electron has moved through. To get the total number of electrons that have moved through this volume in one second, we then times the volume, our AV, with N. And then to finally, to find the total charge flowing in this time through this volume we would times the total number of electrons by the charge of each electron so the total charge flowing per second will equal NAVE and if we remember the definition of current which says the rate of flow of charge which then is our NAVE the number density is the N in the equation of current in a conductor. So the number density is the number of electrons per unit volume. The number density for conductors are greater than the number density for insulators. So conductors have more free electrons per unit volume than insulators. However, you have semiconductors which are not full conductors but they're better than insulators, so their number density is less than that for the conductor, but more than that for an insulator. So that means semiconductors have fewer electrons per unit volume than conductors, but they have more than insulators.